This is D and Less Stress for Life. That's what's up. James T.C. Coley would not have been a follower, would not have been deceived by the conspiracy clansmen. Who are these conspiracy clansmen? John Bobbitt, Mark D'Amico, and Katie McClure. These individuals are alleged to have hatched a plan to con people out of much money. Bobbitt, a homeless Marine, was said to have given his last $20 to Katie McClure, who was running out of gas. Now, now mind you, this is a plan that they were said to have come up with. And McClure and D'Amico posted the story online and the generosity was requested through the GoFundMe account and the monies came in. Thousands of individuals were duped out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. I want you to know that if this was true, that they conspired and they con concocted and, and they, they, they committed theft by deception, TC wouldn't have been deceived. TC wouldn't have, wouldn't have been tricked. TC wouldn't have been duped. Why were many of us deceived and duped and 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 um, conned out of our monies? Two reasons. Number one, selfishness. And number two, laziness. Selfishness. Because we have no interest beyond our noses. If it doesn't concern anything beyond my nose, I have no interest in it. Added to that, I don't want to get my hands dirty. The reason why many of us were deceived out of laziness is because we did poor research into this story. We believed it because we were too lazy to truly check into it. Not all of us, but many of us. And another thing as far as the laziness, procrastination. Oh, I want to help, uh, but um, maybe there's something on TV. Maybe, um, maybe I need to wash my hair, you know. It's so easy to throw a little money at it or a lot of money at it. But while we're throwing the little bit of money or the lot of money at it, we're throwing the money to individuals who are ready, willing, and able to deceive. And all the while, guess what? The truly hurting remain truly hurting. How about TC? How is TC so different? Well, this brother, number one, saw a need. Number two, got involved. And number three, went full tilt. Mr. Coley returned from the military after faithful service. He took part-time job working at a broke down, underfunded, under-resourced community center. And after six months, he was hired full-time. At this same broke down, underfunded, under-resourced community center. That remain broke down, underfunded, under-resourced throughout the next 30 years of his employment. If Brother TC saw a need, if he saw a way that he could enhance the program, programs at the facility, he did it. In fact, a brother that I was talking to shared that when he came on during TC's last few years, during the sunset of TC's years, TC, who was known throughout this, this, this community, did not say, no, nah, you need to stand down, young brother. I got this thing on lock. No, he was like, hey, if you see that there's a better way to run it, Get involved. Do it. Be about it. He did not stand in the way he encouraged. He mentored that brother. But what was he mentoring the brother? Or how was the brother even realizing that that TC could very well be a good mentor for him? Throughout TC's years of working at that facility, any kid who wanted to play football, was able to play football. Any kid who wanted to play basketball was able to play basketball. Any kid who wanted to play baseball was able to play baseball. TC would make sure that the kid got to the to the the field or the park or the court. And not only that, but he'd make sure that that kid got back from the field, from the park, from uh from the court. 
every kid had transportation. If any kid or any family was hungry, TC found some type of resources to make sure that that kid, that family was fed. As far as the facility, the facility was an oasis because it was in the middle of a resource desert. It was in the middle of chaos, housing projects all around, police running through the community, um, dealing with the, the drug epidemic. And speaking of the police, how often would TC even call the police at his facility? Let's think rarely, if ever, probably, probably one time he called the police and that was because a kid got shot. Other than that, the drug boys and the gangbangers put down their stuff, put down their colors. TC didn't play that. But not only did TC not play that, they respected what TC was about. Allowing the kids a break from the chaos in the community. That's what TC was about. And not only was he about giving them a break, but he was about encouraging them, motivating them to thrive, to go to the next level, not settle on what was around them, but building them up for their future. Many folk thought TC didn't even have a wife, didn't even have a kid. At, but yeah, he did. He had a wife. He had some, some kids. He, even the kids were were right there in the facility, getting involved, helping out, being helped. Only heaven knows T.C. Coley's full impact on young men and young women in the, the community that he decided to serve. After his hard fought several decades of service, this building was dedicated to him. But the need persists from the time that Eve bit into the fruit up until Jesus cracks the sky. The needs will persist. Will selfishness and laziness prevent you from helping? Will selfishness and laziness cause you to get duped? Or will James T.C. Coley's influence manipulate you to see the need to get involved and to go full tilt. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Also, click the notification bell so you can be notified of our next video. Lastly, go to www.destressmethod.com for more resource information. Well, that's all we got for now. This is D, and less stress for life. That's what's up. Peace.